We're Box Magazine, and we're here with Ian Thornley from Big Red. Uh, now it's been about 12 years since you released Pleasure and the Greed, and since then you've toured with your own band Thornley. Yep. Uh, what made you get Big Red back together and decide to try it again? Uh, it wasn't really a conscious sort of we're going to make a Big Red album. Um, it was time for me to go in the studio again and make a record. And I'd sort of severed ties from my last sort of uh, record company slash family sort of thing. And uh, it was a real good way for me to close the chapter. I think just calling it a Big Red album. We didn't initially go in to make a Big Red album. So, um, which is where the music was heading. And somebody suggested calling it a Big Red album. It seemed to make sense with the music and uh, the way it sounds and feels. Now it sort of it feels right to, to call it that. So. Okay. And I also thought it was interesting that you titled the album Albatross. It was almost, is it a play on words that Big Wreck is kind of your albatross, maybe? No. Okay. It's really just that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it all stems from the, the, the Coleridge thing, like the, the, the rhyme of the ancient mariner. Wearing an albatross around your neck. Um, I just thought the, the phrase was right for the pick and Lo and behold, it's like three or four songs called because I found out after the, after the fact. Um, and then as far as looking for the title for the record, I just thought it was a cool word and it provides some imagery. Uh, so what's going to be next for Big Red? Are you going to be touring the U.S. at all? Or? Um, yeah, we have a couple more in the U.S. for, for the summer, but for the most part, it's, it's like weekend warrior, fly-in festival season kind of stuff. Um, so there's not a lot of get into a rhythm and, you know, it's more fly in, play the show, fly out, fly in, play the show, fly out. So that'll be the summer. I think as far as the fall goes, I don't know, we're still talking about that. Uh, One thing I love about Big Rack is there's a lot of focus on the guitar work and that's always amazing. Are there any female guitarists that have influenced you or that inspire you at all? Um, it was interesting. Joni Mitchell. All, alter tunings. I'm, I'm a big fan of alternate tunings. And she's Canadian too. Just uh, a brilliant musician, a lovely songwriter. Um, but it's, her guitar playing, I think, is often overlooked. It's just a crafting songs out of like uh, Coyote. If you know that tuning and that song. It's brilliant, beautiful. So um, I don't know. Leona Boyd's an obvious one. Um, I think she's another Canadian, actually. If I'm not mistaken, I think she's Canadian. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. There haven't been enough of them. You know, There's not enough chicks playing guitar. Yet. We're getting there. Yep. We're getting out there. Um, but seriously, it's, it's anyone who's good, I'll listen to man. And I usually end up ripping somebody off. If it's good, I'll steal something. From them. And I've stored, I've stolen more than my share from Joni. If you could play or tour with any female musicians, who would it be? Joni. Joni. Well, Tori Amos has been a... She was big for me when I was in college. Uh, Amy Lou Harris has always, throughout my entire life, has been... Uh, um, Stevie Nicks. I had to play with Stevie Nicks um, ten years ago or something. So. But I didn't get to actually watch her. She cleared out the backstage area and I was like, Stevie, of course. I've seen her a hundred times. That's, uh, you know, to joy with or just to be able to watch every night. Uh, to hear that voice. Uh, I know you just released Albatross recently, but on the next album that I'm sure you already have planning and you're ahead in the works, uh, would you do any more collaborations? Like on Pleasure and the Greed, where you did with Miles? Would you collaborate with anybody else? That was, uh, that, that's really born of just a friendship between Miles and I. It was like, he was in L.A. at the same time we were doing the record. We were hanging out a bit. He was filming that, that movie with Mark Wahlberg. Oh, rock star. <laughs> and uh, we were just hanging out one night. And I was like, you know what? There's a part in this tune. You want to do it? He's like, sure. So that was really all that was. It wasn't like we're going to collaborate. And it's going to be. And then you're going to go on tour with Smash. And we were just dudes making music. Um, so I, that's kind of how it happens for me. If it, if it comes from that, then absolutely. Uh, if it feels forced or weird, I'm too old to put up with any of that. I, I just said, uh, no, thanks, man. Like, if there's a label guy who's like, you know who'd be great on this tune? You know, if it's not someone that I have a sort of personal 
connection with it doesn't make sense to me because I have a personal connection with all the music. I just put somebody on there, the stapler, because they have a, some cachet in a certain market or whatever. Um, but having said that, who knows? Like if Keisha wants to rock with me, we'll see what happens. You know, we get with Khalifa. Or, Are there any acts on Rock in the Rings that you're looking forward to checking out? Seven Dust was the one that, like, I haven't seen those boys in a while. Uh, and they always sort of slay every band. I'm just happy that we went on before they did. Um, yeah, and I didn't get a chance to see them, so I'm kind of bummed about that. Um, I'd like to see Alice with the new guy. I still haven't. Um, my buddy Nick, who did our record, my last two records, has done their last two records. Um, and he has nothing but praise for the boys and what they're doing, so I'd like to check some of that out. Obviously Soundgarden, we'll see what, you know, see what they're doing. And, um, oh yeah, because people really are always comparing your vocals to Chris. Oh, yeah, no, I don't get sick of that at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just signed someone's autograph, they thought they were looking for Chris, and I was like, I mean, it's like long haired, bearded deal. Jesus guy now. Yeah. I'm still rocking the same thing I had in high school, so <laughs> I got the short spike, I didn't know what else to do with it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they're doing. And all the big boys, why not? Well, thank truth, you. truth be told, I'll probably be on the bus, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. us. And we hope to see more of you in the U.S. I'd like to be down here more. Thank you. Cheers.